Today, I want to talk to you about legalism and what that means for the Christians. Do we keep the commandments of Jesus or is that legalistic in nature? Is that trying to earn our salvation? There's a lot of Christians that are confused over this topic and don't know which way is up here. You've got somebody telling you to obey the commandments of God. And you got somebody else telling you, don't worry about it. All you have to do is believe in Jesus. So which one is it? Actually, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Paul actually calls this doctrine of demon. If you've ever heard that, it's talking about legalism. He says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the insincerity of liars who con whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from the foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving, for it's made holy by the word of God and prayer. So what Paul is talking about here and is so often taken out of context in this doctrine of demons is he's actually talking about legalism. Now, a lot of people have accused me of preaching and teaching a works-based gospel, but I'm always saying we don't do good works to be saved, but because we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 makes it clear that we're saved by grace through faith, not of works, so that no one can boast, right? So this is not our own doing, but it's because of what Jesus did on the cross. And because of grace and because of the goodness of God and because of what Jesus did, we turn around and we are created for good works, Ephesians 2, 10. In, right? We are his workmanship so that God prepared these works beforehand that we should walk in them. So we do good works because of what Jesus did on the cross. Most people are familiar with the two commandments that Jesus gives us that we should follow in Matthew chapter 22. When the Pharisees approached him and said, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? He says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So most people take that as, well, wow, that's pretty easy. I used to take it that way. I just got to love God and love other people. And then everything is pretty much fair game. I mean, after all, Paul did just say legalism is a doctrine of demons, right? Did he not just say that these people forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth? So he's saying that people are forbidding you to have things that's okay to have. That's legalistic, right? Isn't that what he's saying here? But how do we make sense of this when we look at something like Matthew chapter 5, where Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the law or the prophets. I've not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless you're right, Righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So we have two different sides of the spectrum here. We have legalism, which Paul calls a doctrine of demons. And then we have the, well, everything goes kind of hyper grace is what I call it view, where we can just say we believe in Jesus and get saved and then live our lives however we want. So which one is it? If all Jesus is telling us to do is love God and love our neighbors, like I don't don't really understand how all of this aligns. And then Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5 that we shouldn't relax these commandments, but we should keep them. So which one is it? So let's look at this. First, we have to understand that in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus is saying here, you have misinterpreted the law over the generations. See, what had happened is they would interpret the oral and written law into what was called the Mishnah, which had become like a commentary of what the law meant. And then over some more generations, they created what was called the Talmud, which was the interpretation of that interpretation. So we have all of these different interpretations of the law being passed down. So Jesus is saying in Matthew 5, 17, I've come to be the perfect interpretation of the law and show you 
what that looks like, right? So what we're about to see Jesus explain is that they have completely missed the point of the law through their legalism. Looking specifically at the example of lust, he says, you've heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away, for it's better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. Is he telling us to actually gouge out our eye and cut off our hand? No, he's not. He's saying, cut off the sin, pull out the root. What Jesus is telling them in this entire passage with this example of lust, you have become so legalistic because they had to define what was adultery. What does it mean to commit adultery? We still do this today, right? If Especially boyfriends and girlfriends. Well, how far can I go before I'm committing a sin? We've all said it. We've all done it. We've all thought it. So what Jesus is trying to show them here is the spirit or the essence of the law, which we know the law is a reflection of the character of God, of His holiness, of His goodness. If you want to be in good standing with God, then we would keep His law. But because there wasn't given given a law for every single situation they would encounter in life, they began to create these interpretations of the law. And in doing so, they lost the spirit or the essence of the original law that God had given. He was trying to get down to what we call the heart attitude, right? Or the heart posture that God was trying to deal with. We know the scripture that says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? And in Matthew 15, 19, he says, for out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, and slander. So Jesus is really trying to get them to look where? Right here. So he's trying to get them to see here that it's not about the legalistic, did I do this or did I not do that? It's actually possible that you don't do all of these things and your heart is still wrong. You're completely missing the essence of the law that God initially gave. Why is it that he doesn't want us to look at a woman with lust in our eye? And the answer comes back to Matthew chapter 22, because then we're not loving our neighbor as yourself. Do you understand? He said on these two commandments depend on all the law and the prophets. So everything Jesus is telling us here depends on these two laws on loving God with all our heart and loving our neighbor as our self-retaliation. Why is that a sin? Because we're not loving our neighbor. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when Jesus was always calling the Pharisees hypocrites and saying, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, people were like, well, how in the world can anybody be saved? Because they seem to be doing it so perfectly. But Jesus said it's what's in their heart that is off. So when we ask ourselves, well, what can I do or what can I not do? We are being legalistic in our thinking. And it really does come down to the two commandments Jesus gave us. And whatever it is that we're questioning, are we loving God with all of our heart, soul, and with all of our mind? And are we loving our neighbor as ourself in whatever we do? If you stop and think about this before every decision, like think about something as simple as road rage and screaming at somebody. Is that that anger bursting out of you? Well, it's coming out of your heart. And what are you not doing? Why is that sinful? Because you're not loving your neighbor as yourself. If we look at Matthew chapter 25, the final judgment, the separation of the sheep and the goats. What is it that separates them? Look at verse 35. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. And the righteous will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you and do all of these things? And the king will answer them. Truly, I say unto you, as you did it to one of the least of the brothers, you did it unto me. 
This is what we are judged for, ladies and gentlemen. Did we love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind? And did we love our neighbor as ourself? So in conclusion, if we look at the ministry of Jesus, he did not come to bring us a comprehensive list of do's and don'ts for every scenario that we would face in life, right? But he rather came to show us the heart posture. He is the fulfillment of the law. He came to be that perfect example and it's his desire that we flow out of that same place, that same heart posture. If we stop looking at it like a list and rather look at it more like a nucleus where all things flow out of the heart, then it eliminates the possibility of legalism and it eliminates the possibility of hyper grace because we're always thinking, does this honor God? Am I loving God with all my heart, mind, and soul? And am I loving my neighbor as myself? And when we walk through life with that heart attitude and with that heart posture, we are keeping and obeying the commandments of Jesus that he asked us to keep. Hallelujah. This is such good news. Guys, this blessed my heart dearly, and I hope that this blessed yours. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would truly appreciate it and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button, and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people so they can hear this message. But thank you so much for watching this today, and I will see you in the next one.